Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. I hope you enjoyed my last video where I tried and attempted to cover the reason that photo prints fade, especially those made with third-party dye inks. They're just not going to have the longevity that you get from OEM. And it's not all about the inks either, it's about the paper. So I hope you guys watched that video that I just uploaded just a while ago. We're gonna talk about something different though. I've been accused of being biased towards specific brands of printers. That can't be further from the truth. Let me tell you why. I tend to cover more Canon printers than say Epson printers, because Epson really hasn't put out anything that's dramatically new, and Canon has. Let me give you some examples. P600 was preceded by the what? The R3000. Same color palette, basically the same ink set, Okay, they did improve the black a bit, but it really has nothing else going for it that the R3000 already offered. Maybe an improved black ink switch valve. They didn't really elaborate too much about that, but people have been reporting that they are no longer having those problems that the previous family of printers did have. But again, that's it. Okay, the same ink set, the same basic look, the cartridges, the bodies are identical only the chips are different. You don't really see a huge difference between output from either one of those two printers, okay? P400, preceded by the R2000. Now that was a unique ink set. It had gloss optimizer and it had red and orange ink. Well, so does the P400, same thing. Same volume cartridges, basically the same chassis. Again, nothing really new. They claim higher level of D-Max, but again, no one has really shown me a side-by-side -side comparison to make me want to buy one of those. So again, the same basic printer, same features, same basic printer, same features, nothing really new. P800 comes out and I said, oh, heck, that's different. Roll adapter availability, yes. So I bought one. Yeah, that printer does provide you with better features. It's got a much better operating system within it. It's got a better LCD screen. Overall, it's just a superior printer than the 3880, okay? Again, it's, it spouts the same ink palette, supposedly improved D-Max, but you know, how do you know? And supposedly also a better black ink switch valve. Okay, well, out of those three, I decided I'll pick the P800 as something to add to the room. I already have a 3880, 3800, basically the same style of printer, the same capacity. They offer user replaceable waste ink cartridges. So again, no need to worry about how long that printer will last. As long as you continue using, it will never stop working like some of the other printers with internal ink pads will. All right. So that's about it. How about the P5000? Well, the P5000 replaced the much maligned and hated 4900. It was a dog, yes. When it worked, it produced beautiful prints. It did not have any kind of gloss optimizer like the P400 does, but it did produce some really, really good results when it worked. You would literally have to print 24 seven with it. And even then it would start to clog. Yeah. Not only ink clogs, head clogs, but mechanical ink delivery problems. The P5000 supposedly has solved all of these problems. But again, it's about a $24, $2,500 printer. And it's just simply too big for this room. Let's talk about Canon and why it looks like I favor Canon. Prior to the Pro 100 lived the Pro 9000 Mark II. Eight color dye ink palette. It had green and red and then the other colors, the normal colors. What did it give you extra? Well, it gave you the ability to reproduce certain green colors that were not possible to the print engine of the printer. Pro 100 comes in, it looks totally different. Different print head. Granted, the cartridge bodies are, are the same indeed. And the only thing that's different is the chips but the ink palette is totally different, totally redesigned and brought to a level of longevity performance 
unbeknown to anything else out there, period. I don't care who makes it. Canon Pro 100 OEM ink will surpass the quality and longevity of any other OEM, third party, I don't care where it comes from, dye ink out there. So I said, okay, we got to get one of these as well. I did the comparison, print comparison between the 9000 and the Pro 100, and the Pro 100 kicked the 9000 out of the ballpark. Get out of here. Again, brand new design, brand new everything. So I bought it. I added it to the stable. What about the 9500 Mark II? That was Canon's first attempt at pigment ink printer for a desktop type situation. 13 inch white capacity, 10 color palette, no chroma optimizer. So it suffered greatly from gloss differential. The results were very good, but again, it did not really have that punch that the Pro 100 provided. So it was replaced with the Pro 10. The Pro 10 came out, they revamped the whole ink set, again, added Chroma Optimizer. No more problems with gloss differential. Printing on glossy, gloster, satin, anything with a shine came out beautifully. There's a, there's a little glitch printing on matte media. You have to choose fine art media to trigger the use of matte black. Otherwise, your black simply is not going to be as strong as you would expect because it's really using photo black. So that is a negative. But again, the printer itself was different. Okay, it was different compared to the 9500. Different enough for me to want to add it to the stable. Then what comes out of the blue, nothing like it in the past. A 12 color desktop type printer, 13 inch wide capacity, using 12 color palette or, or 12 cartridge palette because one of those was chroma optimizer again totally totally different ink system with three grays and two blacks imagine that and of course proprietary red again it produced ridiculously good prints that had a problem though that printer from the very start had some problems it was discontinued i still have mine Knock on wood, it's still working. I just recently had a B200 error. My fault for not using the printer for like two months. That is a glitch that is not supposed to happen. But again, the printer itself, when it is working correctly, which is again, 99% of the time, whenever it has a problem, it's my fault for not using it, produces incredibly good prints. So let's, let's move up one more notch. Pro 1000, what did that replace? Nothing really. There was nothing like it. Okay. It's a big old printer. You need half a table to be able, like mine. Mine's a big dining room table. You need literally half the table to operate it. But the output is just majestically beautiful. And it has something that nothing else in this room has or offers. Proprietary blue ink. Yeah. This is the only printer that will be able to produce gorgeous very realistic results what you see on your monitor especially when you're dealing with really really deep blues and violets and purples this printer can handle it p800 cannot okay the p800 will fall short when it comes to be able to reproduce those types of colors they're totally out of gamut as far as photoshop is concerned or lightroom is concerned but this printer can handle them because it's got that proprietary blue ink as well as red and of course the rest of the colors. It only has two grays, it had to make room for because it has that blue. But it really makes no difference as far as output go. You will be able to see the difference between output, the same image with something strongly purple, deep, deep blue, printed on the P800, printed on the Pro 1. And you're gonna go, oh yeah, yeah, forget it. Put that P800 print away. There's my blue. There's my purple. If you don't have that type of color, P100 will kick butt in 99% of the situations. It's when you're dealing with those strong colors in that region of the spectrum that this printer kicks butt. Okay? Of course, the Canon printer line has all of these cleaning cycles that it performs. They're all timed. You have to print, print, print on these printers to really get the most advantage or the best ratio of ink usage 
okay? Ink to be used for creating prints instead of ink to be used for keeping the printer operational. That's what you need to do. That is the secret in Canon printers. That is not so much of an issue with Epson printers. Epson printers allow you to get into the bad habit of not printing often. And then you have to run several cleaning cycles to unclog it, which basically means that you've wasted a lot of ink. All right, that is it. So as you can see, had Epson been putting out brand new from the ground up models like Canon did in this case, they would be living here happily and I would be making tons of videos featuring those printers for you. And I was thanked by someone who said that they are so glad that I do not do reviews from companies who send me printers because I would have to kind of then be a little biased toward them. No, I don't do that. I buy whatever I have and I report on it, good or bad. All right, that is it. Thank you so much again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And we just hit 25,000 subscribers just the other night. And that is thanks to you guys, the viewers, for subscribing and supporting this channel. So again, thank you so much. Happy printing, everybody. And bye-bye.